Welcome to Owen and Baru's Barbecue. Today we're cooking up something really special that only four chefs could actually pull it together and make. They're called ration bars. Oh. <laughs> it's the bottom of the barrel here, but we have four chefs in the house tonight. Uh, <laughs> myself, as always, I'm here, uh, joined with, with Nick, but, but to, today, who, who we got? You can introduce yourselves. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you had like a. I'm the guy who named the oh podcast. I, I thought I thought you were, I thought you were going to go with the Ordor Moon Dragon for sure. Something a little more exotic. I almost just dropped an F bomb, oh, but then I realized okay. what show I was on. Yeah. Well, can I, can I just say that uh, Boston's influence on the show is so poor, and he shows up so little <laughs> on the show. But all he can resort to is like, well, I named it. I named it. I let's got just, the email let's address. Just, let's just say this is the third episode of the Bad Batch, and Chris and Jay are tied with appearances yes. <laughs> on the show. There is there's about as important to the Bad Batch as Echo and Tech. So, oh, nice, oh. nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Wait, so I, I'm, I'm not going to belabor it. Obviously, you know this is my my first episode of the Bad Batch. I'm on with you guys, but I'll, I'll just go a quick fast forward with you guys. I know because we're on uh, the replacements is the most recent episode that we. Yeah, so watched. spoilers for all Bad Batch. Basically, yeah. if you're listening um, to this. I mean, I'll give you a quick run- rundown. The The first episode, the pilot episode, the hour-long one, I thought was was fantastic. I loved it. Anyway, I'm, I'm just happy to be back into that world. Um, the second episode, what was Even though Kanan's in it and you hate Kanan. He, he, was a, he was a bitch when he was a, when he was a kid. <laughs> so what was the second episode's name? I forgot what it was called. It was that memorable. Um, so, like, it, the episode two, I was just like, dude, I am. I, I literally fell asleep watching, and I had to go back and rewatch it again. Counterpoint: uh, it was, I love too because it, it joined that that uh, deserter family. I can't remember their names, and it showed why it was so difficult for the Cut. Jedi to his name to, was you know, go around because they <laughs> yeah. had to have access yeah. codes or whatever. So I thought it yeah. was a good episode. Okay, and then and then this last episode here. So here we are with um with the replacements. Um, not my, the band. Not, not doesn't the, relate nor, to the band. Nor, nor the Keanu Reeves movie. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, I love that movie. By the that's way, good, that's a good. It's fantastic. Better than this episode. Um, way better than this episode. Yeah, okay. Yes, okay. best five dollar bargain band Blu Ray you'll ever find. It definitely, definitely. Is. I mean, I mean, um, you can just stream it. But anyways, but um, so I, I feel better about this episode than I did episode two. Uh, it's still. I feel like I'm. I'm kind of going through the whole motions of like you know when I first watched Clone Wars and when I watched um, Rebels or the first season, the first few episodes of the series. I was just like, oh come on, let's move along, let's move along, let's move along. But uh, come on, tick. <laughs> Cheer up. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude, I'll tell you the the weird South African accents kind of flip like New Zealand. New, New Zealand, New Zealand, New Zealand. Sorry, New Zealand New accent. Kind of throwing me off. Well, it's more in the here. You gotta just you gotta you gotta tighten up your tongue a little bit and you talk. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, but You're welcome uh, back anytime, Jay. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'll tell you, like this this episode, it, it, it's it started to get a little bit better for me about halfway through, and then I kind of see some of the themes that are coming along with the with you know you kind of like the the switching the reverse roles of Omega and uh, I said I said Omega. She says <laughs> it's Omega. Omega. She says it's, it's Omega. Omega. It's Omega. I believe it's um, Omega. <laughs> uh, Omega and of course Crosshair, kind of like almost like doing like a like a role reversal. On, on mm. the yeah, uh, like, like, like was I'm cool. in your place now, and you're in my yeah. place now. Kind yeah. of thing, um, yeah. which I thought was pretty cool. Did we lose Nick? Um, he's coming back. So yeah, cool. he'll be he's back. like he's there like he frosty the snowman. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's getting to be a little bit. Uh, we're 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 starting to figure out why the hell is Omega even in the story. <laughs> um, and I, I have a crazy crackpot theory about what I think why I think that is. And we'll, we'll get to that later. But I just wanted to kind of get your bracket speed. Here I am. I'm, I'm I'm live. I'm with you guys on on the most recent episode, and uh, I'm I'm in the kitchen at the barbecue right now. So. <laughs> tear tear off that fat from that meat, man. Yeah, get in there. You know, just get that gristle. You know, tell me how you don't like the dragon. So, um, the dragon was cool. But well, I'm just I'm throwing out the dragon as, as oh, just okay. fun. I, it did very, it did. very Empire Strikes Back. Somewhat, yeah, yeah, because yeah, because it's in the it's in a moon. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah they like, the like craters. And they, you know, yeah, the dragon, and they're all blah, 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 It also and lives like, off of energy. 
It like, does. Like Minox. So, kind yeah. of, yeah. yeah. But then it didn't like eat it. It just kind of wanted to have it there just to keep it company. It's like a dog. <laughs> yeah, it's like collecting energy. <laughs> precious. It kind of was a little like precious see. Yeah, like I, I know you guys haven't listened to the first episodes, but like Matt, Matt and I's worry with this series was that so far, is it kind of mirroring a little bit too much of the Mandalorian and that you have Hunter as kind of like the Mandalorian type figure and you have Omega being very much baby Yoda slash, you know, Grogu of like, you know, and that's why we've kind of been against her having possible force powers and more being, uh, a combination of all of the enhancements that the, the first four have. Uh, Cause like the, even in this episode, that was the only issue I had with this episode was that it felt a little bit like the spiders episode of season two of Mandalorian. And then, Oh, look, they crash landed on a planet mm-hmm. and now mm-hmm. they have to go look for something. But there's these, <laughs> this one creature versus multiple spiders, but like, it's like these things. And then, you know, they have to escape it. Like, I was like, okay, this kind yeah. of feels a little bit like that episode. Yeah. Yeah. It also reminded me of that that Brady Bunch episode where Bobby Brady was the only one that could fit through the like yeah. the opening. You know, it's like no, I didn't. It, I, you think well, it was Brady Bunch? Did you I just think... bring in the Brady Bunch? Are you <laughs> I trying did, to I get did. Jack to listen? As, you know, <laughs> Jack, Jack, if Jack was here, he would have perked up. At that I'm going for the line. Jack yeah. demographic oh, yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Matt, you're great. That's a great idea, Matt. <laughs> but the problem is the Jack demographic doesn't listen to this. You're, no. That's very valid. <laughs> Maybe like five percent. I, I realize that now. I was going to say that I I actually kind of like the pacing a little bit because it's taking its time. It's 16 episodes, right? Mm-hmm. Is it, okay. Yep. So it's 16 know. episodes. It's got a long time to tell the story this yeah. season, whatever, wherever they want to go by the end of this season. So I, I think it's having the context that this isn't an eight episode arc where sure. you might say, okay, we only have eight episodes and by three, we're still not really we'll you know, it, right? where are we going. And I, and I, so mm-hmm. I know Dave Filoni is comfortable with exploring a space, taking the time to, to develop the characters and get you to be really bought into them. And, and to me, this was a really nice, you know, character arc for both Hunter, for Omega, for uh, Wrecker, uh, for Crosshair, um, on, on, so many, on so many levels, right? So uh, to me... Um, and, and you're right, uh, Echo is not really getting much to do. Um, I, I like Echo. I mean, he's got so a bionic hand. I mean, like, he's, the, he's got the he's best of bu- Domino Squad, right? Is it jo- Domino Squad? Yeah, he's Domino Squad, yeah. So, I mean, he could, um, he could even hack the computer correctly in like episode one or two. It took him forever. It, he's he's going to have his moment. He is. Echo, that's what I'm it's 16 episodes. Yeah. So, to me, the development of the characters in it. There was a lot of character development in this one. I thought by oh. the end that she had her own place to sleep. I thought mm-hmm. it was so sweet. I thought that was really nice. And also, uh, the stuffed animal thing was cute. And then the, the it was this episode, right? The crosshair goes and kills. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, like, we see. That it. was intense. That was that was, that was badass. So that, that was, was probably the the best part when he was just like, "Good soldiers, listen to orders," and then they. He, yeah, and it kills and, the dude that thinks he's going to be yeah. a big guy in this, the new empire. Well, what was interesting about that too is there's kind of a, a interesting parallel there of like uh, of like you know tyrannous leaders and so forth and so on and how he was like what, what was that? Uh, nothing, nothing. Yeah, you go ahead. You're, you're doing a jack. Ja- you're pulling a jack. There was right an inside now. joke there between two people. It was not. I was not included either. Yeah, what was that about? I don't know. Are, are you listening at home without watching this? Matt just did something stupid. <laughs> oh, he did. <laughs> Matt's fine. We move up. <laughs> go but ahead with like, your story. If, if, if you think about like the idea, like because the, the guy who got killed, who I, I don't know, they gave him a name or whatever, but from um, that that squadron, the guy who who, who disobeyed the order. He was in earlier in the episode saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah." How, like, you're talking about mm-hmm. uh, how, how his like his his disappointment with the uh, Republic for not really mm-hmm. treating him well, and this yep. and the other, and like and then like oh the, well, the Empire is giving more than the Republic ever did, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of like it, that's a cool little like uh, dynamic of like, like how pretty much every you know emperor or or anybody who's taking over a different mm-hmm. land or whatever kind of that that dynamic was actually kind of cool. But he ends up being the first guy killed. Yeah. So interesting, right? Um, in uh, I, go ahead. To, to your point, Chris. Like, and I think that's you know also to Jay's point here is that there's. <laughs> I was pointing at I was pointing at Nick because Nick and I usually are the ones talking. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's all. That's all. It was just, you know, innocent little like, you know, Nick and I. I, I want to hear Nick and, and Matt's impressions here and thoughts. Okay. Um, so to, to both of your points, like we're, we're getting a slower paced out like show. Yes. And we're getting all of this empire information, which yes. I think is really cool. Like we're getting all yeah. of the world building and with each episode, we're getting a lot more information than we did. I would say in the first several episodes of clone wars or rebels, like mm-hmm. where we're actually seeing kind of like the transitioning occurring yes. and it's, and, and so I'm enjoying that even, Oh, and we're not getting these stupid commercial break act, you know, jumps, you know, when you, when you go back and you rewatch rebels or you rewatch yeah, clone wars, you, you can still skip the intro though. <laughs> <laughs> that whole two seconds. Yeah. of the masks i liked the fact that they did the animated masks mm-hmm. you know yeah. um you know, as, as far as mm-hmm. when they when they've done the lego um as well they do, yeah, they it do with that. lego heads and it's mm-hmm. kind of fun so um they did that with the lego star wars i i, I love it i love the uh, they're showing the birth of the empire and they're showing like uh, it, how it actually became the empire as we know it in a new hope and in and, and mm-hmm. original trilogy. And specifically the end of clones and beginning of the constrictive yeah. forces, which I think is actually very, very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you, do you guys, guys, do you guys think the conscripted, conscripted uh, forces are, are crap. <laughs> well, it <laughs> As we goes, know. Right? It's like, why are they such bad shots? I was like, oh, yeah. just- like Crosshair is their goddamn teacher. Like, how <laughs> how can they can't hit a broadside of a barn? It baffles me. Well, because actually, Crosshair is dead, and all they got left are just some stupid conscripted yeah. soldiers. Well, are they gonna cl- are are they going to clone Crosshair? You know, and use. Well, know, like, the genetic did. material is the oh yeah yeah right? it's so it's they got a yeah. Jango yeah. host yeah yeah, yeah. it's Jango just his material sucks we. Um, you kind of see you kind of see the early formation of dart or uh, the death troopers. Mm-hmm. You know, like they're yeah. wearing that death trooper armor. Ooh, can I? So oh. that, that's that's something I wanted to get to for sure. But what uh, about what about a Nick? We haven't well, heard it, from. Oh yeah, Nick. How about Nick? <laughs> oh, do I do I get to speak on this podcast? Cool. No. <laughs> no. Uh, well, my stuff was not really related to what you guys are talking about. So it was oh just kinda, shit. Well, <laughs> it's I'm so used so, to RCAD. Yeah. So in the last episode, I, uh, I proposed a theory of where I think the show is going in season one. And this episode kind of also kind of put another nugget towards of where I think it's going. And that mm-hmm. I think the season finale will be the battle of, uh, of Camino, you know, yeah. and I had proposed to, to Matt that, you know, in the last episode, I, I said, I do. I said, he said, I do. <laughs> I, I said, I said, I love you. He said, I know. And I slapped him. Uh, <laughs> I wish you guys were here for that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you know, like, because you. you saw, you know, Amiga take off her little head thing uh, mm-hmm. in the last episode. And I thought it could be a red herring, could just be a clue, could be nothing. But, like, in my brain, I thought that's got to be some kind of device to where when she puts it into a machine, in uh, uh, Camino, it's going mm-hmm. to disable all of the chips at one time, you know, oh. and or something like that. Because, like, how else? How like else? A master kill switch, like a master kill switch, yeah, kind of thing. Because I think that's what's going to happen. And you saw even with this episode, in that how the uh, you know as soon as uh, Tarkin and that other guy were talking about, oh, you know, this is going to be you know, we're going to get rid of the clones, and he walks out of the room because he knows they're going to be obsolete soon, and that's why they're proposing you know this super clone. But mm-hmm. what if the super clone goes wrong, or what if the Empire reads mm-hmm. into this wrong and says, oh, they're building another clone to defeat our people? Let's attack, and yeah. then you know, and then at that same time, that same episode, the Bad Batch comes back, they disable the clones, you know, and then mm-hmm. the clones defend their home against this mm-hmm. new that would Empire, be really Imperial cool armor. Too clone like a clone army cool. with you know the uh, empire you know and kind of this final battle on camino that would be that'd or be or mm. omega is the super clone she could be. well because well they said they had a, not, i have a theory about this can i share up sure yeah yeah we're we're we're, we're all over the place we're not doing any kind of recap here so the django material is mm-hmm. deteriorating thanks mace and they need a new thing I think maybe this is overkill. It's probably too much, but I think they're gonna try and get Boba Fett to be like, "Hey, hey, Boba, you want to stop by? We need some new genetic oh. material." Could be, could be. Because I, I loved in Clone Wars seeing the young Bo- Boba Fett, and yeah, it'd be cool to get a little more young Boba Fett. 
So my my, my theory was um, based upon Omega, her name. Omega. The last letter in the in the alphabet, the Greek alphabet. The Greek alphabet. Yeah. Um, could be the last good clone. Could also be the first clone that the emperor was messing with with um, mm-hmm. with the force. I don't want to see him diddling little kids. That's not, not cool. you. I didn't say that. Clearly, you she's, said that. clearly she's force <laughs> sensitive. Clearly, right. she's force yes, clear, sensitive. clearly she's right. force so, sensitive. So and so no, is, she's, she's the last. She's the last of the clones. I, and that's I'm, I'm drawing that conclusion based upon the fact that her name is Omega, which is the last letter in the Greek alphabet. And but what if we're messing with the force and and as, as an experiment from the from Emperor Palpatine? And this could be like the last of the clones utilizing the force as well could also be the first of his special project of these special troopers and, that are all and related. clearly the Kaminoans are because in Mandalorian the, the dude has a Kaminoan symbol on it so, so yeah. and, 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 and you can tell the 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 main Kaminoan I don't know what his name is I don't know if I care but like he's all, he's got like a, an ace up his sleeve he knows what's going on like that's why he sent her off to do her thing oh he is so he he's always dude, been he's, so he's, cool he's four exactly, steps he's ahead of everybody else. Mohawk, Mohawk. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. he's got the sickest Kaminoan hair I've ever seen. The Emperor, I don't know. We have to be ahead mm. of the game on this one. Isn't isn't Jack fourteen? Isn't that Lego? Yeah, it is. But like, I was curious. But it is still a part of Star Wars. So that's why I was. That's why I already that project. I wrote is Jack fourteen canon because Jack fourteen is also a clone, uh, but it is part of the Disney era. So I was like, I wonder if he is. But it's a clone that has force sensitive powers. Anything with Lego, they kind of just. They're like it's its own. It's almost like its own side universe. It's like yeah. that's Lego universe. You know, that's how I see it. Like it doesn't really, you know. Um, so uh, one one other you know thing we might see, although I I, I think they're going to keep Grogu pretty close to the vest. But would we could we see a, a Grogu cameo? You know, at some point, like I don't think this season, not this season. I don't know. I mean, we might, might not at all. Because uh, I doubt we'll get Kanan back because Chris already wrote a letter saying, I don't want to see Kanan anymore. I don't want to get see Get that Kanan. little <laughs> son of a bitch off my screen. <laughs> well, you know, he goes off and, like, you know, hooks up a smuggler. Yeah, has, and he kind has of a cry. Has a good cry. It's, I'm, I, you know, I've been thinking about it for a while. Probably too much. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to source Skypex's hate of, of Kanan. And it's too big for this podcast, isn't it? It is too big. I, I think it traces back to 90s Boston when mm. had a huge crush on Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yeah, I see where you're going. I see where you're going. Yes. Yes. And, and you know, he had the posters and everything. Mm-hmm. And then she starts to date Freddie Prince Jr. And that is when the hatred began. Honestly, I, I I think I think my my distaste for the character um, is because I I read a new dawn before I watched Rebels, hmm. and I think Kanan Jarrus's character in a new dawn is way cooler, and like I got way into that story, hmm. um, but then seeing him on Rebels, so I don't know which came first, Rebels or a new dawn, the book. Same I'm time. not quite Same sure. Time. Same time, okay. So well, book, I think I think they handled his character in the book so much better than I think they did in the show. The, I just the cover, I, I felt the cover that of that book is is kind of odd too because it shows Hera, it shows Kanan, and they look nothing like kind of like what the they actually end up looking oh, yeah, like in, yeah. in the cartoon. But so, yeah, good. I, I I read that book too, and I and I like that book, and maybe it's because I had already seen the show, so I was kind of putting that framework of what I knew as Kanan onto that that book or that character as I and read. I was, and I was the so, reverse, right? And so you were the reverse. That, so you, you kind of had your own Kanan. idea that's of... That's my Kanan. What, what year, that's what my Jar Jar Jarrus. That's not how he talks. <laughs> that what Kanan year, wouldn't say that. What year did Rebels come out? Go ahead. What year did Rebels come out? I don't know. 2015? I, well, I, I remember... It probably, I was probably walking around with Colleen on the Comic-Con floor, but like it was before <laughs> Rebels had come out, but they were doing an early uh, release of the book at Comic-Con only. And so I have that version of it. I'm sure Colleen has the copy of it, too, because she always gets every book I get. Can I just tell you the stupid piles of books that are around our house? <laughs> like, there's she has duffel bags of stupid Comic-Con books. <laughs> we won't make it this far in the editing of the show. <laughs> <laughs> but, Jesus, I mean, you need to stop. Thank God there was a 
Okay, I'm not going to think that was a pandemic, but thank can goodness can Comic Con was canceled. Okay, so, hold on. So Jay was just criticizing the amount of stupid stuff that his wife has collected. Oh, that's what's behind him. <laughs> he doesn't even read it. You. I appreciate this stuff. I, I love the I irony. See, I, I think I see 4.2 Safe Puff Marshmallow Men in your vicinity. <laughs> you're and you're giving your wife only one. There's that one right there. <laughs> And you here's the one thing. in his catalog. Books are stupid. Toys are cool. No, no, no. <laughs> I, listen, I read I, my imagination. I will never criticize someone for collecting things, but she doesn't even read them. She just goes around and gets That's the book. And then we have to drag them to the airport. She brings duffel bags, and I have to I have to carry them in the air- airport. You're you're a good husband for that. And she never reads them. She ha- they're still in the duffel bags from two years ago. It's like maybe this is like a psychological game she plays with you to to just carry stuff for her. She's like, yeah. I'm never gonna read this, but watch this. I married I'm a gentleman. Colleen. Colleen, please make sure you listen to at least the 22 minute. Mark. Oh, I already put the commercial break at at the mark where he started ah. talking. <laughs> I uh, know that's that's pretty good stuff though. Um, I'm the same way with books. Sometimes I I mm-hmm. kind of buy and and and, I, and it's a while until I get around to like looking at that book. And then when I look at it, you know whether or not I read it. Um, this book has been sitting under my monitor for like I forgot I had that need to read it too. Yeah, I mean I've listened to it. I did. I just bought it to like support Ernest Klein because I think that's a good thing to do. He needs the support. I know, but I, I just did. Um, I didn't. I haven't read it. I have only listened to it. I, I, it's, it's like the new DOS boot. It's just sitting here collecting <laughs> dust. Now, I, I recently picked up a Star Wars book uh, on um, May the Fourth. You know, they had like these mm-hmm. deals or whatever, and they had a digital book. Did, you nerd. Yeah, they had a digital book, a High Republic um, book, and it was called Into the Dark. I think is called. Uh, it's by Claudia Gray, and I like I like her as an author. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I picked up the digital copy for a, a dollar and I quickly learned that I have to have a physical book. I yeah. it's it's I mean, unless I'm like trapped somewhere and I just have my phone, but then I end up scrolling and doing social media stuff. I have to have a physical. book. I, I used to be that way, but I, I haven't traveled in a while. But when I used to travel a lot for work or just for personal you know, travel, Having a Kindle with like the backlit screen, it's so simple. It's very simple, but it's just so Paperwhite. much easier. Awesome. Mm. It's so I, I love I love my the Kindle paper white. I think it's mm-hmm. the nicest looking like e reader display ever yep. made. Agreed, a hundred percent. And and it, it 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 I so I think it just in that con there's certain contexts where I agree with you, Matt. Like having the tactile experience is great, but uh, it, it breaks me out of my phone. I think that's the thing is when I had it on my phone because I just put it on my phone. As yeah, a that's uh, it, it, your, your phone crazy. screen is not going to cut. You have to have like to to uh, Chris's point, like that type of uh, uh, that e- a reader paper screen thing. Yeah, so uh, that yeah. you don't get email on it. You know, you're just kind of in yeah, it, just so. like and it, and it, but it actually kind of ha- it doesn't have the backlit. Again, these yeah, it, are it, it's a different but, experience. Like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll take it, your word it, for it, it because I. There's just something about like the physical part that breaks me out of being in this digital thing, you know. But I anyway, I've, I've gotten through the right first out. couple chapters and I've enjoyed that that book so far. So I'm not going to give a book review on it, but uh, um, I'm I'm enjoying all of the High Republic stuff because it's like this this little area that can just grow as far as an expanded universe. Oh sure. Whether or not they they get to all of it, who knows. Um, one one thing about this episode I wanted to make sure we mentioned um, was the word war mantle was mentioned, which mm. also appeared in Rogue One. So when they are in, you know, when Jin's trying to find her, her stardust, you know, and uh, Cassian's going through and, and they're reading off all of those different like dark yeah. saber. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. War mantle was one of the things that is mentioned. And it's mm-hmm. also mentioned in this episode or in this uh yeah, this episode as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so I, th- I think that's just a nerd in the writers gonna be like, hmm, "What can I reference from something else?" Well, hey, you know, I mean, what can we call this? What can we? They what? do that though. I mean, that's <laughs> go ahead, Jay. No, I said what I love about Filoni is unlike a Linda Loft, where just throw it and be like, "Hey, I'm gonna put this fun thing in there." Like Filoni, like makes it part of or mm-hmm. like ties into the story in a really significant way. Yeah, it always yeah. like kind of loops back in a way that like you can pull on that thread if you want to. 
And then mm-hmm. other writers will come along and they'll continue to like pocket or fill in mm-hmm. um, that, that story thread. So, and, and to, you know, I know Filoni gets a lot of credit. There is the, the holocron keepers. Um, you know, there's like a, a, you know, story core um, at Lucasfilm that, that kind of manages a lot of this stuff. So um, what and, and some, their life is like <laughs> <laughs> stacks of books Nick everywhere. Be, yeah. unread. Honestly, like Nick would be amazing at that job. Let's be honest. <laughs> I and I think Nick, you'd really dig that. Game. I, yeah, I would, you, you know, I would. Yeah. <laughs> No, I just think it, it, it must be really hard to live a normal life if you're in charge of like what's real and what's not in Star Wars. <laughs> no, no, I, you you I, just you yeah. just a factual person and you're like yeah. a very chron- chronological type brain. You know? Yeah, I I think you would be normal because to Nick's like again you take a person like Nick that is very like you know uh, like a documentarian type brain. Uh, I think you just look at it as that, but I, I don't think you. It, I, I think you're able to live there, but also go do other things. I, I don't think it would be. Can we look up these people? I want to see what they look. You're like. just you're just you're not you're not Echo. You know, more machine now than man. You with a little <laughs> thing on your hand. Oh, um, to the question earlier, Star Wars Rebels started in 2014 and then went to 2018. Yeah, because so that, that was that was that was yeah. If I was trying to remember what year Comic Con it was, because yeah, so it had to be the summer of of 2014 when we got the book. I know. It's, well, you, you threw me off because I had something to say about. You had something to. About. What did you think of the episode? Did you like it? We, we still haven't gotten to your. Oh yeah. Of, yeah, I mean, it was fine. Writing. It was it was fine. I mean, I was kind of giving my opinion about how I kind of felt it was a little bit like the spiders episode of Mandalorian. Oh right, right. But yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I always like all the little little things as well, and I, I kind of mentioned that about you know what Chris and Jay were talking about how it you know it leads to the Empire building of like how it's starting, mm-hmm. how it's going. I always enjoy that. Uh, and that's what, oh, and then just going back to East, that's what I was going to talk about. You know, I said in the last episode, I don't know if you two noticed that Chris and Jay, but you know what? Like the usually, usually the Easter eggs that are just throwaway with Filoni are things you either notice or you don't notice, and it's not a big deal either way. Because like uh, I noticed, mentioned it to Matt when the crew is approaching the city, you know, to get their uh, chain codes, and you have uh, Tech and uh, uh, Echo up in the ship, you see Wrecker in the behind all of them and he hits his head right on the top of a beam and it's a, it's a call out it's a shout out to episode four the deleted scene when the stormtrooper hits his head and like falls back and like yeah. you, you either notice it or you don't it's like a blink of an eye but it's just one of those things that like only oh, yeah. somebody would do mm-hmm. yep. and then and then john favreau is like huh i have no idea what that what? is you're right <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> it's like I don't know what any of that is. <laughs> there, there, are, there are people. I love that for... is like the only go-to quote for what I think. Of. Well, there, I know exactly people... what you're talking about. I don't know what that is, but great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, just, I love that. Uh, Favreau to, to to oust Kathleen Kennedy. Have you read those? Heard those stories? There's like a uh, whole thing. Like fan service. Like I don't know. Yeah. How I don't. I don't like to. I mean the C- the CEO of Disney said I think a month ago, a month and a half ago, mm-hmm. that she's here to stay. So yeah. she's not going anywhere. Yeah, she was the casting director in one of my favorite movies of all time. So she gets a, e- a, a Goonies. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, so, so she has a little special. But he picks ET though, so he likes. Not, I love I, ET. It's one of my favorites. I, I, I yeah. thought he was going with ET. Great movie. Sure. But it, it, that would be Richard Donner if we're going directors for uh, Goonies. Spielberg was a producer. Or maybe a director? Yeah, uh, he's a producer. Producer. He's oh yeah. So um any uh any like other like theories going forward or, or things that you might think that might might uh you know, I don't know, these these characters as moving, you know, like wild you know, who do you think we're gonna meet next maybe or um you know Rex is coming, right? Oh but I feel like he, that, he, he was he, he was in the trailer, you exactly. know. Exactly. Yeah. Uh so Matt and I have briefly discussed it. Let's see who you guys' opinions on it. I think Matt and I are both in the camp of we would rather Omega be a combination of the skills of the Bad Batch, uh, her being the, the final clone. But then there's also the theory out there because of her hair being the same color and having the flip on the mm-hmm. back that she is actually a clone of Palpatine. Uh, what do you think of that? It's It's a theory I've seen. Um, I think the force sensitivity l- leans into that as well as the fact that Ray is a descendant of a, you know, a botched clone 
um, mm-hmm. of, of Palpatine. I, it, it makes sense that that is the case. Like either part of his midichlorians or something uh, is is part of Omega. Yeah. I think I think Omega is Palpatine's little. She little definitely toy. has some. I mean, I don't. I wanted her to not be force sensitive. I just kind of like. I, I do like stories that develop around non force um, mm-hmm. people. That said, it's it's hard to watch force uh, Star Wars Resistance because there is no <laughs> force, <laughs> force people. I don't know if you Jay have you have you watched Resistance at all? Have you dove down that? One thing I know of that is Bobby Moynihan's in it. I'm a Bobby Moynihan fan, but I, 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 and I love the moments that he's in it. And um, uh, uh, I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting his name, but he's from Scrubs. Um, is that Donald, Graf? Oh, no, Donald. Donald uh, Faison. Faison. Fa- Faz- Faison. Right. Faison. Yeah. Well, because he he Turk. plays a character on there, and every time I hear her his voice, you know, I'm just like, oh, that's Turk. <laughs> um, Turk Turkelson. But the last name, I think, is also similar to his. It's like a play off of it, a Faison. Um, so, so that's why I'm I'm blanking on his on his. So they have so, like the cast, the voicing cat voice cast on that is just amazing. Like you get cameos by Fred Armisen and stuff like that. But I'm mm-hmm. that's because I mean anybody who's anyone who wants to be a part of Star Wars doesn't oh, matter yeah. what it doesn't matter what it is. Oh, like, for sure, of course. But, like, because you you never know you might you might end up being Katie Sackhoff and you get a role on a live TV show and now oh, exactly so happy <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, hopefully we we see a lot more of more of her in the, the next season oh we so, will yeah hundred percent we will yeah although there's been rumors about a time jump you think there will ever see a time jump within the Mandalorian Could maybe not season three but eventually for sure otherwise how are we gonna get back to Grogu you know true true still be, still be the same. Like ten years, ten years time jump. He's still like a little like, <laughs> like a year older. Well, I mean, even if they they let him with Luke for at least a while, so that he learns a little bit of you know, like getting getting a little bit of that Force knowledge. So, um, well, what are the chances we see uh, Grogu chilling with a porg? <laughs> well, here, what if what if Grogu are you kidding me? Into It'd like be stupid a, if they didn't do that. That's uh, literally a license to print money. Gr- they Grogu are Yoda. not as as marketable as as Baby Yoda. <sighs> yeah, Baby Yoda is yeah, is pretty pretty up there, I think. So, uh, Baby Yoda basically just dumped all over Babu Frick. So oh, I know. I don't listen. Don't listen. <laughs> to this. I know what he's talking about. <laughs> it's it's funny <laughs> because all four of us have baby Yodas. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> two of us are showing them. Uh, my daughter has mine. <laughs> so all the baby Yodas. To go around. Have you seen, have you walked down the toy aisles and now there's like 20 different types of baby go- Grogu? Oh, yeah. you get the baby Grogu but, that the ears feel real. That's the one you have. They, they've got oh one now. Gosh. They've got one that's now. It's got, G- it's got GPS in it. So you can like, put it on your belt and it'll follow you around the room. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's but like, this, this is still my favorite because now they have one that eats and stuff. But I think this one's still the cutest. My son, the uh, youngest, loves this one. That is, that is. It, no, cool. does that have the soft, sensitive ears too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got you know, it's got cute. Because I like that that kind of you know. Anyway, oh, um, I like sheep ears. <laughs> don't even, don't even. <laughs> did I just did I just cross shows with your? Yeah, team? you did. You cross shows. So shows. <laughs> that's a good segue. Uh, if you enjoy what we do here, check us out on the RCAD um, Ramblecast After Dark. Um, where well, we some- also talk about Star Wars, but it just pisses Jack off at that point. So I just say Jack off. It does. We talk about it. It doesn't understand. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> what is this? What if, what if I'm listening to? <laughs> we openly cuss more. If you, want, if you want to hear us talk about Star Wars and really anger a middle aged man, um, this he ain't is middle show. aged anymore. Uh, that's, that's, more, that's why you throw him a bone. You know, you get, you yeah, get, I, think, like, I, think, I think I'm a middle aged man at this yeah, point. Exactly. Yeah, it <laughs> is. It's like, pretty much yeah, us yeah. now. You, you can say he's late in life. Um, <laughs> Oh, um, hey, man. That's, that's why you throw him a bone, though. You know, you get like 10 minutes of Lego talk followed by 20 minutes of Star Wars talk, and then you go, How about those Padres? And then he just like, Ah! You know. Oh, my God. Hey, man, he's, he's becoming a YouTube star, you know? He is. He had he a viral a video. I'm so proud yeah. of him. He finally got a he's, viral video. Yeah. He did it. You know, if you, <laughs> if you <laughs> fish long enough, you can catch something. <laughs> oh, but if you want to, if you really want to like F with him, call him John Boy. Just oh, I did. I did. <laughs> you did? Okay. <laughs> 
I'll remember that. Well, I told him, I was just like, okay, you can do this. This is easy. You just voice over a clip. You can do that. That's just you sharing your opinion. You love sharing your opinion. Hey, hey, you know, for what it's worth, he did a nice job. Like, he, I, did. He, he did. He did. Well, and uh, and so everyone was giving that. him crap for being a discount John Boy or whatever. I was like, just own it. Just own that you're your dollar store <laughs> John Boy. I just, hey. I just well, no, I was like, no, just own it. Like, like you can even like, switch your he gets, name. He gets to dollar gets store John Boy. Yeah, and you probably get tons of views. I mm-hmm. agree. I said yeah. just own that thing instead of like I don't know. I think it'd be a lot more fun if you did it. He he he, go, he likes to go against the grain sometimes. When if he just leaned into it, you know. Imagine imagine if it gets the attention of the actual John Boy. I and know. The actual John Boy mentions right? one dollar store John Boy, and all of a sudden your dad is raking in. The, I know. The that's what we'll, I told him. I was like, just own it. It'd be so much cooler. If you we'll, try to convince, go, we'll try to convince him. We'll try to design all the terrible t shirt designs that he's always he's, he's made in the past. And he might actually go to sell some of that crap. <laughs> He'll sell his first shirt, finally. <laughs> his, like, his Microsoft Paint cut and paste. I think, I think he's always design. frustrated because he'd like to take my artistic ability with his like crazy idea yeah. and put them together and it never happens well, it, what's <laughs> funny is he, it, it, he definitely tries to pull you in to help do some of his work yeah he, he does. Does. it's like, it's pull you in and eventually you're just doing all of the work yeah. so just don't yeah. don't ever fall for I know. But you, you know already you, yeah, I, you know I, I know i i i run the i don't run the show i don't do that oh, but oh, I, yeah, you push start. Start. yeah. <laughs> So anyway, that was a little taste of the RC80. <laughs> um, that was a clean version. We, we, get little, <laughs> we, we get a little naughty on the other side. We do. Uh, <laughs> if you if you enjoy what we do here, uh, go over to jandjack.com. Check out the uh, Patreon, Patreon link there. Uh, we also have a merchandise link. Um, send us an email at theforceswelldone, gmail.com. Um, and, uh, Ask Matt about his goats or his sheep, brother. Sheep. You know, it was in my past when I was a kid. So you're and... admitting to it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna thank some patrons. It was just a joke all before now, like a running joke, but now I... it sounds like you're like just no, like, I'm just... I'm, you're owning it. No, I'm not. You, you guys, it's, it's like me wearing blue jeans when I sled. I you was not wearing it's blue jeans. When okay, I was... so this this is a great example for those listening. How how Matt just opens these doors. It's like we're on the Price is Right, and we have to choose which path we're going to go down and busting that <laughs> shop. Bob, and like and all, but all three doors are awesome. So it doesn't matter which one we do. But Matt usually goes over to the door and opens it for us and leads us down the path of his of his ridicule. Yeah, if a Plinko chip was going to go one way, that was great. Yeah, uh, so, it always goes the so other. So for way. context, everybody out there, Matt had an unfortunate accident back in the winter and broke his collarbone yeah. while sledding and looking at but, goats. Yeah, and looking sheep. at goats and sheep. Yeah, uh, he was distracted. No, no, but, this okay, is true. The photo he shows us while he's in the ER. You know, getting looked at by the doctors is he's wearing jeans in because, the bed because and, my and, wife had pulled off my they, overalls. They pull, but you're she still wearing jeans it's, while it's, you're it's, sledding. Like you guys remember? Hey, what's, the wrong with wearing, right? wait, wait, what's wrong with wearing jeans while you're sledding? I I, I had really jeans on. Even. The, 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 this is this is like for you're from you live in Thanks, North Jay. Carolina. Thank you. You don't know what you're talking about. But what's but wrong? With, like, I always wear jeans when I'm sitting. He's admitting to wearing jeans. I it's had like, jeans uh, on it's underneath. It's the greasers went sledding is what is essentially what what. Oh my! my is, what's wrong with wearing jeans when you sled? I sled with jeans on. Seven things are wrong with wearing jeans when you go sledding. Oh my gosh! I can't escape it. I thought I could escape it on this this podcast, but. You know, you and have, I've sh- have, I've shared proof of this with Jay here, so he might be able to back you up. I- I've shared photos of of what I was wearing. Um, yeah, and uh, what was he even no, doing? like my wife pulled off the, nope. the overalls. Bell-box. You can see, you can see here. I'm wearing these black Photoshop. overalls. Photoshop. No- this is not real. Nope. No, hold on. Me. First of all, I don't, why is it a big deal? I wear jeans all the time when I sled. I don't think I've ever it's not cold worn jeans. out there. I'm I'm wearing jeans on underneath it's, the it's, snow gear. Jay, it's so. cotton. You don't wear cotton because if it gets wet, it's gonna stick and it's gonna. It's uh, you're more likely to get hypothermia. Yeah. So if you ever get jeans okay, wet, okay. I live in North Carolina, Carolina, so it doesn't get that cold. So it snows. It's <laughs> San Diego and North Carolina. You don't know jack squat about what you should <laughs> no. wear while sledding. No, this, this whole podcast. That's the is beauty gone. of North Carolina. Is it snows and it's like 35, 40, so you go sledding and you don't need to wear super warm clothes. 
Yeah, or a mask. So, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I was just trying to steer this podcast over. You guys, you guys, I tell you. you know, we had some of the lowest COVID. We had lower COVID rates in Massachusetts, you piece of crap. <laughs> It's because they're more densely densely living together. No, they're just dirty people. <laughs> wow. There goes all of Owen and Baru's <laughs> Massachusetts listeners. So, great. Uh, well, anyways, right. so if you so, like this, this ridiculous banter, come join us for an extended cut of this uh, at the uh, Ramblecast After Dark. All right. And at this point, uh, usually I, I say the names at the end, but uh, because Chris is here, I'm going to let him say Ooh, the, the, the yeah, patron names. As, as you said, they're, they're Star Wars Bad Batch episode related here. Right, so let's so go. Let's see, <clears throat> see what we got here. Governor Tack in. Tack in. Yeah. It's almost Bostonian. I like it. Gavin, it's Tack in. Uh, Admiral Rampart Richter. Give him. Ed the Ordo Moon Dragon. <laughs> you know, like Puff the Magic Dragon, Ed no, the Ordo and, Moon and Dragon. As you guys have probably learned from listening to Oda Baruz, uh, his track record with names on the Arcad, RCAD, is even worse than this. So I like yeah. that one. That was my favorite. War Mantle Maggie. Yeah, because she's she's a Deep special cut. operation. Deep cut. I like it. Yeah. Django Joanne C. <laughs> Django <laughs> I go for the J's, you know, and there's not a lot of J names, Joanne. I'm sorry, but uh, it was there. <laughs> Good Greg. <laughs> That's your best one. That was your best one. Thank Good you. Greg, that, was, that was far this, and away the best one. This was a great show. It was one in a million. Jay, thanks you for joining us. Chris, thanks for coming by as well. <laughs> he's like, oh, I don't really want to thank you for anything right now. <laughs> he's, he's, he's that father that's like the weekends, you know, weekends and one weeknight. You know? <laughs> he's the uncle that brings up the sledding and snow jeans or whatever. And you're just like, like, come I, on. He's like, the, he is the drunk. I was like, hey, I came up with your name. <laughs> I, I <know> you. <laughs> that is perfect. Thank you. Let's end it there. seen you in forever so i wanted to talk to you yeah no i was i was excited that you wanted to to jump on and um i thought you'd make a better episode i i i'm digging the episodes i know wait wait uh, before we get to the star wars stuff i'll have to do the official like i i like i like this okay i'll I'll hold let let me Uh, let me do the official beginning i started recording which just means that colleen's gonna have to like (laughs) cut off that first part. She oh, loves that, by the way. Colleen, as you're editing this right now, I know how much you love trying to find where the start is. Hey, I write them. You manual. do not curse these gentlemen's names as you do it. <laughs> Are you saying that she hates to do that? No, she loves it. Okay. Yeah. We've been All pretty right. good for the last while of like putting the actual like ad time. At the exact second. All right. Well, then she I'm going to say, you guys don't pay me enough to do this. <laughs> All right. Then I'm starting right. Three, two, one.